Welcome back to my tutorial series on using reinforcement learning with um, OpenAI Retro. In the last video, I showed you guys the results of using stable baselines library along with OpenAI on uh, F0. And it worked really, really good. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to set that up. First things, we should start from scratch. We're going to make a directory that we can work in. We're going to call it stable baselines. And we're going to uh, oh, CD into it. Um, now we're going to make a virtual environment, python-m, vemf. Vemf comes with Python, so you can just use it straight away. The thing is, we are actually going to use Python 3.6, because on my current installation of Arch Linux, the default Python is 3.7, but TensorFlow does not work great with Python 3.7. In fact, I don't think pip even finds it if you try and install it. So you got to use Python 3.6 for this tutorial to work. If you don't have it, figure out how to install it on your um, computer. I don't know if it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. Most Linux repositories have both. I think in Arch, you might actually have to use the AUR. Okay. All right, so that's set up. We're going to source bin activate our virtual environments. Now you can see we're in stable baselines, pip list. We have only pip and setup tools. There's a complaint that we're out of date. I guess we can try and upgrading it. I don't know how long that takes. I'm going to cut out the uh, really slow installation. Oh, there you go. So now we're in server version. Yeah, 18.1. Neat. Okay. So to be honest, it's incredibly easy to get stable baselines up and running. We're going to just install it from pip stable baselines. And we're also going to install tensor, tensor, okay, I can't speak English, TensorFlow GPU. Here we go. I may cut this part out, unless I can think of interesting things to say. Um, I can't. Okay, it's done. Uh, you can see it installed a bunch of stuff for us. Cython, Pillow, OpenGL, somewhere in there should be Jim, yep. H5Pi, there's some Keras stuff, and TensorFlow and TensorFlow GPU, that's what we need. At this point, you are ready to start using the various algorithms from the extremely nice people at both OpenAI and now uh, the Stable Baselines library. They include... A2C, Acer, AC, KTR, all these guys. And the one I'm interested in here is PPO2. Um, it's extremely, extremely easy to get set up. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So first things first, we're going to touch test.py. And I guess we can just do it straight in Vim, can't we? Bam. Uh, we're going to, uh, for, okay, so first we're going to import, ooh, come here, you jerk, you jerk. Okay, so first we're going to import Jim, because that's the thing we're going to test this on. To do uh, OpenAI Retro, we have to do a couple more things, but uh, we'll start with this. From stable underscore baseline, okay, spell, Lucas, learn how to spell. Dot, actually we're just going to import PPO2, we're not going to import it twice, PPO2. Uh, from stable underscore baselines dot common dot vec. I'll start with policies actually. So policies are, oh, look at it's auto-completing for me, thank you very much. Policies are the models that you're going to use. We're going to start with MLP uh, because we're using Jim and Jim only gives you an array of numbers instead of, for example, you would use a CNN policy, a convolutional neural network policy if you were doing something with images, for example. But we just have an array, so we're going to use this. Stable baselines dot common dot vec and the I always spell everything wrong, so forgive me if I have to go back and do a bunch of stuff. We're going to use the dummy vec env because we're just doing a quick test here. Uh, so that's everything you need. Then you have to set up your environment. We're going to use jim.make. We'll start with cart poll because I know it works. And I don't want any surprises. Um, because 
because this library is set up to be um, for multiprocessing, they you have to vectorize the environments, but we're just gonna use the dummy dummy vecinc right now because it's really easy, and I don't. Uh, I'll explain the rest in the next video. Um, lambda. And so basically, what we're saying is create a dummy vector environment with the environment cart pole one, Jim dot make cart pole one. Uh, and now we'll introduce our model, which is a PPO two, um, and um, the handy thing here is it's really simple to set up. You, there's a bunch of settings you can do, but the defaults are really good. So we're going to specify an MLP policy. We're going to specify our environment, and you can specify the ver verbosity. And I'm going to set it to one, which will give us the um, per checkpoint. It'll give us like the details on the PPO's learning. That's pretty much it. Now we're going to do model dot learn time. Oop, how do you spell this? Time? Is it time steps? What is it? Total time steps. Total time steps equals ten thousand. Uh, you're going to want to use more than that when you actually do it, but I just want to demo this real quick. And then we can save the model to whatever we want. We'll call it cart pull PPO2. And uh, that's it. Now we can run it. Takes a second. <laughs> I need a new GPU. If anyone wants to donate. A new GPU to me, I'd be super happy. So here we go. This is the results of the training. This is it's it's working right now. Uh, these are the time steps. It's going to go to ten thousand. The amount of time that it's taken to get there. Uh, what else? The entropy, the loss, policy loss, the value loss. Um, I don't know what anything else does. We're going at oh, it's done. There you go. So if you look now, we'll have a. Cart pull ppo two dot pickle. That's because it saved. Oh, it saves it as a pickle file, not as an h five file. Whatever, it's good. Um, now, if we want to watch the result, which is what everyone really wants to do, nobody actually wants to uh, uh, train stuff. We can let's just get rid of some of this stuff. Uh, we can do a different thing. Model equals ppo two dot load. And then the name of our file, carpool to ppo2. So that's going to load the previously saved thing. And now we have to do a, I think it's set env. env. So you basically you load the old model, and then you can set the environment you want into the model. In this case, we're going to use carpool v1. And then, like regular old. Um, gym stuff, we're just going to set up a simple loop to play the game or play the demo or whatever you want to call it. So while true, um, action states equals model. This is all available in the documentation uh, on the stable baselines read the docs.io. It's extremely clear how to do this. I'm just walking you through it because personally I like it when somebody explains stuff to me real quick. Dins, info, env dot step, oop, action. So if you guys don't know how this all works, basically the environment uh, steps forward one frame at a time, and you have to give it an action to do at the next frame. So here we use the model predict on OBS. OBS is the, um, if you do an env dot reset, OBS is equal to the uh, environment Variables, I guess you'd call them. With cart pull, it's like four or five um, floating point numbers that represent the angle of the the pole, the speed of the cart, if it's going left or right or whatever. And then uh, you dump that into predict, which will give you an action and another set of states, like the OBS. Um, the action for cart pull is either a zero or a one, I believe. In fact, we can print it out if you want to see. Uh, and it will specify whether or not to go left or go right to balance the pole. That's basically it. So it's either going to say it's either going to say m dot step go left or go right every single frame. And then we're going to do render. 
so you can actually see it all happening. Uh, I believe that's good. Let's see if it worked. I probably typed something wrong. Whoop, there you go. So here we go. This is the, after 10,000, this is how good uh, PPO has learned. It's extremely good for 10,000. Like that's, that's barely, it took like what, 10 seconds to do? This is the output, by the way. So you can see it's zeros and ones per frame. Guys, that's it. In the next episode, we will set up retro AI and play some old school uh, F-Zero or something else. Okay, bye.